So last week, we struggled a little bit in the arena. We had a couple bad games. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to pick the best runs, and we're just we're just going to go for it. We're just going to pick the best cards, and we're going to beat everybody up. So let's do let's do Paladin. Let me uh, update this. We got Paladin going. Booyah! Fresh Paladin. Ooh, only one D in Paladin. There we go. And there we go. All right. So Silver Sword right away is exactly what we're looking for, guys. Uh, it's insane. It's really insane in Arena. You have to set up the board a little bit because you can't go into late game too far behind with the silver sword. You could be a little behind, but you don't want to be too far behind. So having it first, our very first pick, is definitely going to make the rest of our picks easier. Charge Devil Sword is tough to pass on too. That guy's definitely got a solid place in our heart, but knowing we've got a silver sword is going to hmm, make it nice and easy. So let's start with the silver sword. This pick's not as easy. Spellweave. Spellweaver, I'm sorry, man. You're just too much mana. I don't know. I don't know why they thought this was going to work with anything. Um, Blessing of Might has a really, really solid um, backing here. I think that we can get a lot of play out of it. I like the idea of having Desperate Stand with this combo here. Blessing of Might is going to help us get to late game a little better. So that's a tough choice, but I think... I'm actually going to take the Desperate Stand and see if we can get some play out of it. I'm going to go a little crazy there. So we've got the Silver Sword. Ideally, we would have the Silver Sword and 29 awesome minions in our deck, right? Some minions that let us draw cards, some minions that give us some armor, some minions that uh, maybe kill their minions, like a Phoenix or something like that. So since that's not the not the what we're going to be offered here, we also have to consider maybe if we want some other weapons. Sword of Justice is probably not one of the other weapons we want because it's going to help us fill the board a little bit, but it's not going to help us swing through and get that uh, that mid-game control we want, kind of like we'll probably want the Crusader Sword if that comes up. And Rotten Apple is really close second to the, the, the Phantom Militia as my new favorite taunt for Arena. So we're going to take the Rotten Apple, fill out the little, the middle a little bit here. Oh, there it is, the Raven Collar. I just made a YouTube video about this guy, and normally um, he's not offered next to cards that are um, that great. These two are both actually really good picks, too. Um, I would definitely pass up on the Shroom Brewer most of the time for potion of heroism but we're going to take the raven collar because of the value you get from it if you're not clear on the value you get from raven collar check out my most recent youtube video arena insight the first arena insight is about our good boy here raven collar so we're definitely not taking ticking abomination the sentry could get us value especially if we get secrets the problem is that the secrets aren't that great. And I'm a little afraid that if I take the bell ringer, I'm going to say to myself when I see a secret, well, I've got the bell ringer, but it doesn't always work like that. It's not not always the best. Having a one-drop murloc that we can kind of play around, I think, is, is actually what we're looking for. The Valkyrie is going to help us get that mid-game. We just need some, uh, some lower, some lower tier minions to buff here. So the Walnut Sprite is, is definitely in that middle tier bad minions to buff I love the Royal Guard it's gone down for me a little bit in value over the past couple weeks as the arena itself has shaped to be more aggressive than when it was when Ray um, which would first came out also I always recommend it's the number one ability we're looking for here is a silence so I'm gonna take the spell breaker always go for a silence your arena deck jumps to the next tier of arena decks if you have that silent can you go 12 wins without a silence definitely it's definitely possible is it way more likely with a silence yes i would love to work for blizzard so i could look at those stats and tell you the number of wins with a silence compared to without a silence because that line would be a pretty clear graph like that like this all right 
but we don't have that data. Uh, we could start gathering it ourselves, sure, but I'm telling you right now that uh, the silence is, is almost always worth taking, especially compared to those other two cards. So speaking of cards worth taking, all three of these cards are worth taking. I'm going to take the Steed because we already have our eight mana big drop. Bone Mare is tough to pass up on, but the Steed gets you more value in the end especially since it comes out faster. And since we're down to four sets, we've just got the basic one and the three most recent ones, you're going to see a lot more of those cards. So Consecration is tough to pass up. It's a great card for Paladin. Gives us the identity for a Paladin that we want, but uh, we're going to have to pass it up this time over over the Steed, which also gives the the Paladin some great identity, right? That's the that's that's the uh, the 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 primo Paladin identity we're talking about here. So I kind of want the Corsair just to have another one drop, and it gets you good value. I'm thinking though the adaptation is in general a little bit more value. The Scorpion every once in a while gets you that big oof, you know, so this guy would be so much better if it was like so a lot of the guys that destroy another minion give you some some really good value, right? Obviously both the crabs then get a buff. The dragon slayer is a solid 4-3 anyway and if it happens to deal 6 damage to a dragon, then you get the the bonus of it. And this guy, I feel like it should be maybe like a, a one or the other. Destroy a minion with one or less attack or comes into play as plus one plus one, right? So so it's not sitting in your hand without that that value the whole time. I'm thinking that we take uh, the adapt because at the worst, the very worst, we just try to get two sapperlings out of it, two one ones. Um, the Witchwood Piper is really good because it lets you draw a card, but the mind control tech, the swing that it can give you, uh, we're gonna take that. All of these are really good for our deck right now. I don't think we have any two drops yet. So, all right, what farts? What's up, buddy? Yeah, we got the MC tech. We're gonna make some make some noise with that guy. Uh, so we're looking at. I think we need a two drop here. We've only got one one card for two mana, and very unlikely that we're dropping it on turn two. So let's get a berserker here and see what we can do. These are all really good really solid cards. We're going to take the minion because we got our silver sword first pick. We're going to build around that. We don't have anything that summons us silver hand recruits. So this card obviously is a great card. It's seeing play in standard all over the place in the top decks right now. But we don't have that added silver hand recruits. Hey man, nice. I am doing great, Wet Farts. Thank you for tuning in. How are you doing tonight? Happy Sunday. Hope you had a nice weekend. I had a great weekend, if you're wondering. It was really nice. Love this weather. Um, we're going to take the rock, but we need to get a couple more early drops here. So we've already gotten a Rotten Apple, but it is a really solid taunt, so I'm leaning towards that we don't have anything huge except for our silver sword, actually. Let's get another late game drop. What's our three drops look like? So Raven Collar, we're going to play every time. I just made a YouTube video about how much I like Raven Collar in the arena, so if you haven't seen that yet, guys, go ahead and check it out. Just uh, I meant to make it 15 minutes somehow. My passion about Raven Collar made it around 20 minutes. So uh, if you're if you're looking for some breakdown of Raven Collar in the arena. It's right there. Yeah, I had to help somebody move too, right? What's what's up with uh, Cinco de Mayo and moving, guys? It's not a good combination. Let's let's move when it's a little chillier out. We had all this perfect moving weather for like a month, and now people want to move on the hottest day so far this year. But uh, what are you gonna do? Where's your mom moving? Far away? Hopefully not too far. Is she packing up and moving down to Florida? finding that that fair weather all right so we've got a couple three picks here the mind control tech is pretty good for three mana but you normally don't want to play it on curve because of the value it gets you so we're gonna take the frost rider here are we crazy are we crazy enough to have two silver swords I don't think so it gives us a way better chance of drawing it which is nice 
and if they happen to have a weapon destroyer that's good but I think we're going to be optimists and assume that when we get our silver hand sword we don't need another one and we get all the value out of it uh, we're going to take just a great solid tar creeper here okay so not too far is she uh, moving for work did she find find her life's calling do we have any attack buffs not yet and the fungal mancer is just extremely hard to pass up we already passed up on a bone mare which was nerfed from seven mana to eight mana so it's a little bit more fair on the cost fungal mancer is uh has not been nerfed yet not sure it will be but i think the nerf from bone mare moved it just a slightly below fungal mancer in the value you're getting especially on turn five if you just roll with it so let's do that here's another solid two drop let's do it Ooh, a card draw so we've already got our silence you always want a silence never pass up a silence unless it's next to some god tier stuff right and let's unless they happen to put your silence next to a uh, lich king or something like that always take your silence we've already got our one silence at least one so we're happy with that after that we're looking for some poison this guy looks like he could be carrying poison but uh, it's a different kind of poison it's a life stealing poison I don't think we have any dragons yet though this guy with a dragon is insane value without it he's okay but uh, after those two you're looking for s card advantage and since everybody's playing 30 cards the real trick is to get more than 30 cards right so Raven Call we've already have gives us two more Steed gives us another minion so we're getting we're getting some value here and none of these add that but also getting through your 30 cards fast is uh, is extremely important so we're gonna take the loot hoarder oh man here's another really good set so I just rambled about discovering cards adding that card value the mall having this weapon is a uh, is a really solid weapon especially in our deck if we could on turn three get some silver hands or if we could give our guys divine shield this card always always though feels like when my opponent has it it's got the perfect effect when I have it it gives all my guys my guys taunt when I don't need it and since we're playing paladin so I read read the other day that the discover function I thought discover what it did was it limited the the discover targets right so right now we're talking about taunts I thought it limited those just to your class and neutral so this is a neutral card and it discovers a taunt I know for a fact that it limits it to paladin and neutral cards I didn't know that it favors paladin cards or those class cards it felt like it did right like there's there's this bias that every time your opponent plays Stonehill Defender or even when we do as a paladin that we get this insane value from it and that's because it's actually programmed in there so it is actually in the game <clears throat> sorry pause for dramatic effect that the taunt the discover is leaning towards the class so that means that the reason Stonehill Defender feels like it gives Paladin so much value is because it does so you want those additional values from outside of the games we're looking at now having even more cards than our opponent and the Stonehill Defender in Paladin with the extra class bonus is almost always giving you something great with Tareem or uh, Tyrion it's just so good so we had to pass up on a Consecration already so I'm not sure I want to do it again it was for the steed so that's why I think I will probably always take a steed over a consecration I was just saying that a, a second weapon as the champion is is always solid it really helps us in the mid game so what is blessing of kings blessing of kings sometimes is a little bit too much eggs in one basket and we're, we're, we're kind of leaning that way right now so I'm thinking consecration or the champion and I, I really like having a second weapon we're playing a weapon class we get some identity from our weapons here it's never bad to have heal we're gonna take the champion we might regret that because of how good consecration is but uh, 
Okay, so the reason Paladin feels like easy mode sometimes in Arena is because it is definitely the uh, the favored class right now in all of Hearthstone, not just Standard and Arena. I say that because we were offered now a third Silver Sword, and I think we take the uh, the Chain Gang. We don't want to we don't want a second Silver Sword before. We don't want it now. We didn't want it before. We don't want it now. So let's look at our curve down here real quick. Let's see what we really want to fill up on. Uh, we want a lot more twos and threes. So weapon destruction seems like it should be good, especially since I'm talking about how valuable the silver sword is and the other ones. But uh, but overall, it never seems to come when you want it to. So you're looking more for something that gives you value destroying a weapon and hits your curve. So if this was the corrosive ooze, I think it's called the three drop weapon destruction we would probably take that one but uh, we need a we need to fill in this curve here we need to hit something in this range the four is not bad it helps us narrow it out especially since we're gonna very likely want to hold on to our spell breaker for the perfect time so maybe we take the crusader I kind of want a two drop but river cross this is just such such undervalue at that drop I mean it's likely gonna get us more value than the runt though I, I'm not sure when we're going to drop our run early game and get that value out of it. So really, it is probably better than our run when we're looking at it here. Let's take the Crusader, see if we can get value out of that, and try to get some, some two and three drops. So equality, I was actually talking with my friend today about equality, because I, I made even Paladin for climbing and standard. I want to get to legendary for the first time. I've never focused on the ladder before. I've always had standard decks that I like to play, and for the first three months of the year, it was Yogg Druid, because that was just so much fun trying to cast as many jades as possible and winning the game with Yogg. And we actually got to rank four with that, so I felt the, uh, felt the love of climbing the ladder and so I was talking to my friend about his even paladin deck and how it's different from mine and uh, he doesn't play any equality and equality has this value of when you're behind it essentially this two mana card gives you the opportunity to catch up it gives you that and that's the name of it right equality it equalizes the board gives you a chance any of your crummy minions of, of, of trading for theirs but I don't think we're gonna like it as much as Lone Champion. I think Lone Champion's gonna give us give us the uh, the advantage we're looking for here. So we've got a lot of a lot of heavy late game here that we're relying on. But the Silver Sword is the uh, the one that we're really relying on, and the Steed plays on a minion. So our only minions that are kind of big are the Doctor. That's the only thing that's got more than. Uh, then five attack here. So this guy's a six drop, but he doesn't really doesn't really give us that that value. If he had taunt automatically, that'd be fine. I'd, I'd prefer a six six, like the guy that eats your weapon, something with a little bit more attack. <sighs> I mean, yeah, he fits in the curve better, but I think I think we actually take the grizzly here. Now, if this was the uh, the one that what's that called, fury wrath or something, the one that draws a card and deals damage equal to the the card's casting cost, then we would probably take that, just have another spell and another card draw. I'm not thinking there's a lot of situations where we want the black guard sitting in our hand on turn six. I think we're going to want these other drops, but the grizzly, man, I don't know. I mean, he's got those flying leaves. He's calling to us with his golden, his golden roar. What are our other three drops? I wish that there was a way to, to toggle spells in here. I don't think we have any three drop spells. So pretty much every one of these guys we're going to want to drop on turn three. So it is possible we'll have competing three drops, right? But if it's between the Grizzly and the Mind Control tech, we want to hold on to the Mind Control tech. If it's between the Grizzly and the Lone Champion, then if we're not getting the uh, the solo the solo love for a lone champion, then we probably want the grizzly. So I think we actually take the grizzly here. That may be a mistake, but I, I think we want that. So we've got another three drop offered here, another four drop. What's our four drops look like? They're pretty solid. I think we take we take the tiger just for something with a little bit more oomph. Something that's got a little bit more 
strength here to help us catch up if we get behind. Oh, there it is. Holy Wrath. So another card draw. I wish it was the hammer, because for one less mana and the consistent three damage, this guy's very likely going to be three or less damage anyway, right? So we're looking at our card count here. What is it? About half is three or less anyway, but at least it's a card draw. You're always looking for card draw, especially in Paladin. Is that our only? We've got a loot hoarder. <laughs> so we've got a loot hoarder to draw us a card. Oy, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that we can pass this up. I mean, we don't. We don't want the Spellweaver. That's a clear one. This is one of the the better secrets, though. I think we have to take the Holy Wrath and uh, and hope it gets us some value. Ooh, a knife juggler. We always like to see a knife juggler. And Grim Necromancer is surprising value on four. Uh, maybe not surprising anymore, but he's, he's really good value on four. This guy's uh, decent for two. We don't have a call to arms. We're not playing the, the standard value with him, so we might end up having to drop him on turn two and not really loving the value there. But what is our our other options on turn two? I mean, that applies to the, the wolf also. We might need another fatty, though, but we've got the Silver Sword was our first pick. Obviously, Silver Sword is extremely good in Arena, so we're trying to get the value out of Silver Sword, get to it late game, but uh, I don't want to make the mistake of having no other late game. So we've got the, the Doctor to catch up, but that's our, our only thing with more than, than five attacks, so maybe we take the Worm as just a, a fat drop here. Yeah, I think we do. What do you guys think? Probably the Worm? Okay, here's a card draw. We're going to take that guy, we're going to figure out how to draw with him. And uh, Phantom Militia is my, my favorite uh, favorite taunt of the new set, so let's go with that. I think this set... Uh, so we didn't get a poison. That's okay. We've got uh, the mind control tech for some cheese. We've got our silence. We always love having a silence. And we've got a lot of ways of making it to late game. So I, I really like where this deck is going. I had to pass up on two consecrations though, but now now I'm kind of regretting that because uh, we're going to get some value out of our early guys and we don't want to have to trade them. But uh, that's how it goes. Let's